May God bless you. Tomorrow marks the one year anniversary of my baptism, my confirmation, and my first Holy Communion within the one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. So this story of this year since taking on the full power of the Holy Spirit, becoming a child of God, really starts the week before my baptism. So I was going to college for two years before that, before that event. It was almost providential the way this worked out. But I quit the maintenance job that I lined up for myself, that I was mostly doing for money, and decided to dedicate my life in service to the church. And so, at the time, the RCIA, RCIA priest, Father Carr, who I interviewed on the podcast way back, you should go check that out, he told me something that I didn't believe at the time, that I should go apply for the Abbey of Gethsemane, the oldest monastery in America. This was a place that was only 10 minutes away from my house growing up. I never heard of it. I drove by it, never knew what it was. Of course, not growing up Catholic, I didn't pay no attention to it. But after becoming Catholic, it did hold a special place, just as a reminder that people still take the spiritual life seriously. And that example was one, when I was researching everything, that really brought me to the Catholic Church. Anyhow, me applying for this monastery. It was almost a story out of a movie. I disregarded that college degree, of course, again, dedicating my life to the church. And so, I ended up at this monastery surrounded by monks, working with monks, still a baby in the spiritual life, one month in. It was that December, that cold winter, when I was coming into this job, and it was really a penitential job, a contemplative job. I would say, for me, it was more so contemplative, doing the same thing over and over again, making fudge, doing the monastic uh, labor, the jobs, working in the barns, raking up leaves and sticks, and all of that, all of that monastic work you would think of when you think of monks. That's what I was doing. And so this was really a great many months of doing this work that was bringing me closer and closer to God through this moral conversion. The intellectual conversion, of course, happened before my baptism, but it was only after my baptism that this true moral conversion was happening. And that was consisting of the Holy Spirit dragging me through the mud for many months after my baptism, even still now. But as I was trying to break fully away from sin and developing this life of holiness, this monastery was the perfect place for this. Other news, other things that are happening at this time were, of course, starting the Catholicism for the Modern World Multimedia Apostolate. Really taking this on as an apostolate, as a mission. As St. Francis said, as he was building up the church, he was working on his own soul. And so that's what this has felt like, working on this apostolate, building it up. I go back to the monastery. It was like the first month I started working there, one of the older monks asked me, what is attractive, what is bringing, what is leading young people to the Catholic Church today? What can lead more young people to the Catholic Church? So then, I would have said the answer would be faith, or tradition, or beauty, or any of those things. And so I still stand by those responses. However, my response now would be the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit brought me into the Catholic Church, and the Holy Spirit has led me through the mud to be purified by the waters of baptism. And so... I really look back over this year, there are a few other events I'm not really thinking of right now, but I suppose it would be good to end with these two. So firstly, was the death of my great-grandfather, Francis Leo Walker, that year before my conversion to the Catholic Church, coming into the church. The first 
day or first week, I believe, I was actually converting. The feast day of St. Peter and St. Paul. Didn't plan that one out. But I told him that I was thinking of becoming Catholic. Now, he was really the rock of the family for many years. Most of my other family members went their own way, separated themselves from the church implicitly or explicitly, not going to Mass, but maybe once a year or so. And so he was a consistent Mass goer, daily Mass goer. And when he was in this nursing home, I went to him and told him this, that I was thinking of becoming Catholic. The first thing he did was hand me a rosary. And so... Of course, I have become a huge child, of, a son of Mary. I have a huge devotion to Mary. Just last weekend, I enrolled myself in the Brown Scapular. I'm also part of the Angelic Warfare Confraternity. So those are two lifetime commitments I made this year of my baptism, that Brown Scapular. It was a good one um, leading up to this week of anniversary. However, my grandfather, he died only, we only got to go to Mass one time together. He died this spring, last spring in the year 2023. And so, once he died, I'm wearing a shirt right now. I decided to really live out my faith as a man as a rock in the family and so i hope to convert many of my family members by my example i know a few might hear this i wish to convert you to the church of our family the church of christendom for the last two thousand years all of our fathers all of the fathers of you listening right now were members of this church were sons and daughters of this church striving to build it up in any way possible that they could so just last week and i was at ncyc that take that took place at the lucas oil stadium where the eucharistic congress will happen next year that will be a really pivotal moment in the american church of reviving that devotion to the eucharist which is the body blood soul and divinity of jesus christ remaining with us always jesus didn't say i'll leave you this supper to remember me by he said that he would be with us always even to the end of the age so i want to think back about this anniversary of dedicating my life and my service my very self to the catholic church why do young people come to the catholic church nowadays because of the holy spirit because the catholic church is worth building up how many great cathedrals are being made today how many people still believe in beauty truth and goodness how many young people want to devote their self to something higher than themselves. How many people at all want to give their life for God? And so, that's what I want to give my life to. I hope that I can help as many people as possible, evangelize as many people as possible, make them Catholic, bring them to the Catholic Church, with the Holy Spirit working through me. Not me, of course, that would be prideful. None of this has been my doing. Only the bad things have been my doing. But all the goodness, all of the good that has come from this apostolate of the Holy Spirit's founding, giving me a mission to evangelize and spread the gospel, picking up this flag that our fathers place down they didn't drop it they handed it on handing on the sword of the the christian faith the catholic faith the universal faith that has never changed since it was founded by our lord and savior jesus christ so may jesus christ be with you all and may god bless you all